Uh, for the Rook 4 edition, we decided to make only one weight uh, optional. So it means we don't have a lightweight and normal edition of the wing. And uh, we decided to build a hybrid with a light and durable heavy materials to no not sacrifice just the lightness vs the durability of the glider. The first two top panels of the skin are made from Skytex 38, which is durable and well-proven material. And the back part or the main of the top sail is made from a new MJ32 material, which is 32 grams per square meter. And it's also well-proven material for us. We already use it in a Bishop tandem glider and a Matrix school wing. So these two materials, we use it on the top. On the bottom of the sail, we decide to use the Skytex 27 lightweight material, which quite brings the total weight down of the glider. And also the bottom surface is not so affected with absorptions during takeoffs and landings, and also doesn't have so much radiation of UV light. And then the main work and the blend of materials is used in the internal construction. So the, the highly stressed internal construction, we use Porsche 40 hard finish. So this is 40 gram per square meter and we use it on the, in, we use it in the, on the loaded trips in the canopy. So this it, it means where the bridles are connected into the ribs. And this is in the first and second group. The wing tips are made uh, supported and unsupported are made from 32 grams. And also I diagonals, which are really high stressed, are made with a Porsche 40. But all the rest is use of the Porsche 32 grams. So it means the back diagonals and all the unloaded trips. So just the unsupported trips, which just take the internal pressure of the canopy loads so these have really bigger perforations and we use this 32 gram material. One optimization is the use of different sort of materials to optimize the weight but the main work of the weight optimization in internal construction was done with the perforations in the ribs and all the other segments in the D ribs diagonals. So there we put really big focus on the, how the perforation were designed. Firstly, let's say we take in account the unloaded trips. The unloaded trips, the trips we just take the internal pressure of the wing. So it means when the wing is inflated, it wasn't want to go to the ball, but the ribs are holding the shape. And these ribs, which doesn't carry the lines, which the lines are not connected to, we call it unsupported ribs. And these ribs doesn't take so big loads. They just take these, let's say, pressure loads. And so in these ribs, we can put really, we can make really big perforation because they are not so stressed. We really try to maximize this perforation in these unloaded areas. And the loaded ribs, which the lines are connected to, there it's more crucial to not make over cutting, so to not make too many perforation because then you weaken the total construction of the glider and the force distribution is not nice from the bridle attachment points to the skin to the where the lift is produced so we have to be there really careful to optimize the cross cuts the the holes corresponding to the how the load load is distributed as we observe rook 4 one prominent aspect of the wing catches our attention the pronounced arc and the winglets could you elaborate on why and how this feature was designed the way it is? We decide to use winglets on the canopy. And the idea why we use it is that we decide to use more uh, pronounced, more constant curvature arc of the wing, which brings many advantages in flight. First, it can make canopy more uh, compact, solid because the constant arc or, or let's say more uh, circular arc gives higher uh, span-wise pressure in the canopy and also in, uh, when, we, when we are terminating or ma making circle with the wing it, the changes so bank less, have less effect on the trim speed of the glider because the projection of the surface 
doesn't change so much with, with the bank so it so the glider when we make turn doesn't change so so doesn't make so big change in a stream speed winglet helps to stabilize glider in a turn uh, especially when we are do certification spirals with certification spiral we have a specific requirement how the maneuver should be done and the winglet helps to perform wings with more pronounced arc that they they go through certification process. These uh, winglets of stabilizers for sure helps first the, it really depends how we design this winglet, how big is surface of the winglet, where is position of the winglet on the wing, but it for sure stabilizes wing in a rolling motions. So it also benefits when the pilot flies straight, let's say when after thermaling, when he just glide with the bar, it gives the paraglider more EO stability. So glider doesn't have this pendulum effect, left and right banking, but is flying more like on the rails. The Rook 4 incorporates a full line sheath with the new Magix Pro lines. What prompted this decision? Uh, personally, why I decided to use the new Edric uh, 8000 Magic Pro lines is that the glider during the lifespan doesn't change geometry of the line. So it means the, uh, the pilot when buy the new glider, it will keep this flying characteristic also in 50, 60 or 70 hours. So it will stay tuned well, trimmed well, and the pilot will not notice m major changes during these, I don't know, 100 hour cycles. This is firstly why we decide to use fully Kevlar. Second, second, why I decided to use is for me the competition lines are the most easiest lines to handle in the takeoffs because the sheeted lines have this, they are not spliced, so when they are stitched, they are stitched with zigzag. And this means this corners always tends to stuck when you when we arrange the glider at takeoff when we doing uh, line checking and all this, for me personally, is the easiest li the lines which are just plight because they don't have these sharp angles which don't tend to stack them. The risers have been updated from the Rook 3, featuring new pulleys and systems. Could you provide some insight into these updates? We start to use the new material for the risers. More narrow, I think, is around uh, 7 mm webbing from Kevlar is the new one. We, after some testing, we see the material is really stable and really also in a aerodynamic aspect is better because it's more narrow, but still not complicated in assortment when we prepare for takeoff. So the risers are built with this new 7 mm webbing. And also we changed the BC system. So all the BC is also running through these ball bearing pulleys and it's really soft. So the pilot can really have this sensation of flying two liner glider in between the thermals when pressing the speed bar and playing with the BC system is all really smooth running and really if you fly six, seven hours makes some sense because you're in general, you, you don't have so big stress on the legs and so you are after six hours, you're less tired for sure. As mentioned on the website, the design has been optimized for the best takeoff behavior. There's been much discussion about the small intakes, often mistaken for causing the wing's slower behavior. The Rook 4 features slightly larger inlets compared to the Rook 3, but is this the primary factor contributing to the Rook 4's improved takeoff performance? For sure, mostly, we succeeded with the optimization of the intake, but not only the size of intake, but also with the position of the attachment points and the, the the plastic dimension, so all the reinforcement plastic, how it's positioned in the wing, really makes sense when we prepare the glider, when we put the canopy on the ground, the canopy already have some shape, and this shape is mostly built of, with these plastics, which are sewing the, into the rib. So when we put the glider on the ground, already have some volume, and this plastic really defines how the volume is built in which places of the wing is built. So with the dimension of the plastic, we also quite have dimension of the plastic and position of the plastic have quite big influence also on the takeoff behavior. 
So all these components together uh, with the intake and we also reduce weight and uh, with much lighter total weight of the lines greatly improved the takeoff performance of the Rook 4. So I think we have really nice takeoff now and you can take off really from some technical, more demanding places without any stress. I think we quite built good uh, starting wing with the Rook 4.